Hi, welcome to the Fossil Framework. This will be a short video presentation and demonstration on container native backup and recovery. My name is Keith Tenzer. I've got 20 plus years of experience in backup and recovery. I've held various roles and I've even built enterprise backup and recovery solutions and products from the ground up. You could say it's my lifelong passion. I have a blog, KeithTenzer.com, and I've been at Red Hat since 2015. Let's talk about the advantages of running databases on Kubernetes. The first is bringing applications and their data together through locality. This has advantages in performance, stability, scalability, and simplicity. Kubernetes allows for simplified configurations. As we know, database configurations are very complex, and as such, there's a huge value in that aspect. This leads to, of course, being able to do fast deployments and upgrades, and not only that, but successful ones, which is something we're lacking in the database area today. Even complex things like HA or structural hierarchies can be built up in Kubernetes using stateful sets. So that's ready for databases and ready to go. Dynamic storage provisioning allows database operators to not only provision, but deprovision storage on the fly and integrates them with a lot of vendor products and solutions. And finally, Kubernetes operators wraps it all together and more. And this is the next gen way we're going to be running and deploying and managing our applications in a programmatic way. So the question really is, why aren't we seeing more databases on Kubernetes? What's missing? And in my opinion, there's one thing that stands out, and that is backup and recovery. If you cannot backup and recover your applications, then you can't sleep at night and you sure as heck won't run your databases on that platform. Fossil aims to solve that problem. And let's look now at how Fossil works. So there's three microservices that Fossil deploys. There's a server service, which is handles configuration, state, and acts as a control plane. There's the application service, which exposes application functionality through plugins, and the storage service, which exposes storage and archive functionality, again, through plugins. So Fossil is, is a plugin framework. Fossil views the world through the eyes of a workflow. In Fossil, a workflow is just a series of steps. Each workflow step is implemented in a plugin, and, and that plugin is executed on either the application or storage service. There are three types of plugins today. There are application plugins. Those are the steps representing the steps in pink. There are the storage plugins, which are representing the steps in blue, and the archive plugins, which are representing the steps in green. So once the, a, a backup workflow is started, it's going to first contact the application service. It's going to prepare the application for backup. So you will have a plugin, and that plugin will then interface with the database. Um, once it's quiesced in a backup state, or you've done a dump, whatever the case, we're ready to actually back up the database, either logically or physically. And here we trigger the storage plugin. We can use rsync, or we can integrate with storage vendor technology to do that. Once the data is backed up, then we um, put our database back into an operating, uh, a normal operation state, so in, out of its backup mode, or clean up anything left over from the dump. And finally, once that that is complete, we can optionally archive our data to the cloud, S3, whatever you want, or potentially something else that you have. So Fossil is written in Go. However, all of these plugins can be written in any language you want. Even, even a bash or a scripting language could be used. The restore works very similarly. You have a work, restore workflow, has a series of steps. You've got different steps for application storage and archive. Uh, it's going to first contact the application, prepare it to do a recovery. Whatever those steps may be is decided upon inside the plugin. Then you're going to optionally or potentially pull the data back from archive, if that's where it is, on your primary storage. You're going to then pull it from your primary storage back onto your application. And once the data is there, of course, you can perform a recovery. And so at a high level, that's really how Fossil works. It's that simple. So let's get below the surface a little bit and actually uh, look at how it's deployed and used. So the first thing you're going to want to do is deploy it. 
for OpenShift, we have some templates uh, that you can use, which makes it very easy. You could create, basically create a project, go in here. I've already deployed it, but you can basically add a project, import YAML JSON, um, in, it, clone the GitHub repository. Under there is a YAML folder, and you can basically run those templates to set up Fossil. As you can see here, there's the three services, the server service, the app service, and storage service. Once it's deployed, they all expose an API. The API documentation is online, so you can basically hit the, the endpoints slash API v1 index.htm and get there. Uh, and you can see not only um, are the APIs there and uh, the API documentation, but one thing really neat is you can actually try the APIs out yourself. Uh, and of course, here's the inputs and outputs, whatever it's expect, expecting for this, for this, for this API. Um, so that's really good. In addition to the API, we've implemented a CLI, which is obviously using the API to do everything that it does. And that's what we're going to use to show you backup and restore. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is actually uh, get uh, create a backup configuration. So I'm going to show you one that already exists for MariaDB. Um, I've just got it from the server. You can see it's just a bunch of key value pairs. Um, and there's only a couple things you need to configure. You need to decide what application plugins you want to use. So here's the app plugin, storage plugin, and archive plugin. Uh, and you need to configure basically a backup retention and potentially an archive retention if you're using um, an archive plugin. You can optionally also configure commands. These uh, allow you to further interact with the framework. You can, so you can execute whatever commands or scripts you want, and they'll be executed inside uh, that application itself. So once you have the, the main configuration, then you're going to um, uh, create a configuration for each of your uh, plugins. In this case, I'm just going to show you the AWS one. It only needs two things. What region is it running in and what bucket uh, do we want to use? That's it. So once we have that, we can do a backup. Um, what I'm going to do is connect to the database real quick. In this case, the MariaDB that we saw. And I've, uh, in my database, I've created a table called authors. And you can see it right here. There's uh, various authors. And I'm just going to add an additional author. Um, we'll call it Ken. And change this to Ken. And give it an ID of 5. And so now you can see I've just added the author Ken uh, to, my, to my table. And now we can basically back that up um, just to show how this how this works. So I'm going to basically choose my action. And it's going to be, in this case, backup. It's going to run off that backup configuration and the policies daily. Again, you can have different policies here. I have daily and weekly. Uh, and then they have different uh, counts of backups that they're retaining, depending on if it's um, a, a primary or a secondary uh, backup. So I'm going to run the backup uh, workflow. You can see how fast it is. Um, again, it's going through. It's doing a database. In this case, it's doing a database dump. Um, it's then um, it's then it's, uh, saving that dump um, as in a backup uh, and putting it to the cloud. So if we go and look at these steps, the first thing we see is each backup has its own unique ID. So in this case, it's the workflow ID. That'll be important later. So 7648. Um, then you can see Here's the steps of the workflow. It goes through, does quiesce. All of these things are executed, of course, not um, centrally, but in the plugin, um, in this case, in the MariaDB dump plugin that's running on the application service. Then um, we go to do backup. In this case, we're using the rsync plugin. So it's going to rsync the, um, that uh, dump file. So it created a dump file up here. And down here, it's going to rsync that to uh, a backup location, uh, which in this case is being stored in the storage service. So the storage service has persistent storage, uh, but it could be anywhere. Uh, the, then it's going to unquiesce the application. So it's basically cleaning up uh, some temporary files that are left around from doing the dump. It's going to perform backup retention. So we said retention count should be five and seven for archive. So it's going to delete any extra backups um, primary for the primary backup. Then it's going to archive to uh, the cloud, in this case, Amazon. And uh, it's going to perform archive retention and send any notifications. So if I now perform a backup list, I can see our, I should be able to see our backup, uh, 7648, that's the workflow ID, timestamp. And I can also look at um, what backups I have on archive. So I should see it also in, uh, in AWS S3, and there it is. And in fact, I can go into S3, and here you can see it's going to store under the bucket that we gave it and under its config and profile. We didn't talk about that. It's just an organization thing inside of Fossil. 
Um, and under here, it's basically going to create a folder for each backup, and that's where the files are going to be stored. So here you see 7648. That's the backup we just did. Um, and I'm looking at, of course, an S3, and here's that uh, dump file that it, that it, that it created. So now uh, what we can do is actually uh, perform a restore. Uh, in order to do so, of course, um, we're going to want to create a restore condition. So and to do that, I'm going to connect back to my database. And I'm going to, again, show my authors here. I'm going to do a drop table authors. So it's gone. Now if I did a select star, it's obviously, in this case, doesn't exist. I deleted it. Whoops. So I need to do a restore. So all I'm going to do to do a restore now is I'm going to just change my action to restore. And I'm going to give it the workflow. Um, ID of 7648 and off it's and again the bright policy which is daily in this case and off it goes and so now it's going to bring the data back um, you can see how fast that actually is of course this isn't a lot of data in my database so it's, it could take it's going to take however long it takes depending on uh, what the data size is or what technology you're using if you're using snapshots it's going to be also this fast um, and then it's going to uh, once it brings the data back into the container it's going to then perform a recovery uh, so now if I go back into my database here, I should select star from authors. And what do you know, all my authors, all five of them are there. Uh, it's, it's that easy. It's that simple. And that's really how it should be. So if this, um, you know, is interesting to you or got your attention, then I highly recommend checking out the community. Uh, it's in GitHub under fossil slash fossil, uh, which was just recently actually launched and set up. And there's a lot of documentation on there. So if you're, if you're a user, you can get going and actually start using this thing uh, and, and love to hear your feedback. If you're a developer, uh, then there's a lot to do. Uh, obviously, one of the things is building the plugins. So please get involved. Check that out. Uh, let us know your, your, your feedback. And thank you for your time.